All right, so I'm gonna do a quick video here on how to patch some holes in your drywall. So uh, we raised our living room floor up and that means the outlets had to get raised up. So all I gotta do now is I've got about six holes um, where the old outlets were that I gotta patch just because the new trim isn't gonna be able to cover all this. Um, if you had really wide trim, you could in theory just not cover it or not patch it in if you don't want to. But since the new trim's not going to be able to cover it, and um, I don't want the cats or dogs throwing anything in the holes, I'm just going to patch it up quick. doesn't really take too long, and I'm going to do what I've seen referred to as a California patch. So take a piece of drywall like this, and then basically what I'm going to do is cut um, like an oversized square out that, for what I need, and then... I'll actually have a piece of drywall that actually fits into that hole and then whatever is left over I'll have I'll peel off the back side of this so the brown paper side I'll peel that part off along with the drywall and then it'll just be this outer kind of white paper and then I'll just uh, mud up and attach it like you would uh, a normal patch and then this just helps kind of have that nice smooth transition between um, your regular wall the patch and then back to the wall again versus trying to either use like a mesh patch or something else that you can buy at the store already made. Just um, using regular drywall and making a patch. So uh, I've already measured this piece so it's um, gonna be wide enough. And since all these um, holes are basically at the floor level, I'm only gonna be able to patch kind of the three sides. It kind of is what it is. I'm not worried about the bottom coming out or anything like that. So it's not too big of a deal. So basically the bottom side of this will be going in the hole and then there'll be, you know, three sides surrounding with a couple inches on either side. So all I'm going to do is just take my speed square, scribe a line on the piece of drywall here. That gives me pretty good even coverage. And then, like I said, I got a bunch of holes to patch. So I'm going to hopefully get it all out of this one piece. And then I'll show you how I, I cut out um, for the hole itself. Okay, so we got our piece cut, and then what I've done is I've just cut it with the blade on the back side, broke this piece already, and then what I'm going to do is you want to save the white side as best you can. So once you have it cut, you're just going to want to kind of peel it. And then you'll have this piece which we're going to throw. And then what you're left with is this. You just have this real thin piece of paper. And then this center piece right here is what's actually going to go in the hole. And then we're going to break these two other wings. And do the same thing. So now we got a little rectangle. And then just this little guy in the back. So this should fit in the hole loosely. And then like I said, all you're going to do is just do your normal mud um, around the edge here. And then slap this on. And then do some more mudding over the top to get it to lay flat and then smooth. And then um, let it dry for basically a day. And then come back the next day. Sand it, see if you need to re do another layer of mud to kind of get any lumps and bumps out. Um, and then you just got to do that. I got to do that for all the other holes that I got laying around here. But it's a really good way to patch your, your drywall and actually have a solid piece versus just, you know, laying like some vinyl tape or some mesh over the hole and then just mudding it up. Because at least when you do it this way, there's actually something there versus just a hole. Um, that way in the future, um, if someone's trying to hang something or attach something to the drywall, there's not just a cavity there, especially if you're doing a bigger patch. That's not quite big enough to go from, you know, stud to stud. So it's, it's a good little method to use. Um, I used this in the basement when I was patching up a, a hole that was for a three switch box. I did the same thing, just obviously a little bit bigger. Works out fine. Patches. You can't even hardly tell that there's a patch there, so 
good method, super quick, um, and really effective. So I'm going to get this done and work on the other ones. Okay, so we're on to our second patch here. I already did the first one, um, so I can show you kind of what it looks like once it's dry and what you got to do to sand it. So this one is a little bit more complicated. I've got two outlet boxes that i got to fill. I just made one big piece with the two little panels. And then I'm just going to use my mud with a little, I think it's like an inch and a half blade. And basically what I'm going to do is just kind of smear the mud all over the floor and the wall. So I'm going to take my, I think it's a four, where is this, six inch wide blade and just get it all nice and flat. And all this is going to really do is press paper into the mud, get a good nice bond to everything. And then, now that I got that going, I'm going to take some more mud and put it over the paper. This will kind of soak through and then just really help kind of get everything to bond together. And then at the same time, it'll kind of help that paper blend into the wall. So that way, when once I sand it, it won't even look like there's a patch here is the goal and then in the future we'll have to come back over and paint all this which is fine because we're not a big fan of the color anyway and I could have if I really wanted to put something behind here um, so you could have taken like a piece of, you know, two by four or one by material or plywood or something and run it in the side of the box and then screw it to the existing drywall in the patch you're putting in if you wanted to make it solid and not kind of be springy like this is, but I'm not too worried about it just because this is at the, basically the floor, so I'm not worried about it being super springy. If it was in the middle of a wall, like your, let's say you move a switch, like a light switch box or something like that, then I might worry about it a little bit more. And then I would maybe think about putting a, a piece of wood behind it or something like that. But with it being essentially on the floor, like I said, I'm not too worried about it being a little springy and spongy behind. So that's, you know, kind of how that looks wet. And then over here, this is the dry one from yesterday, or from, yeah, the day before. So the edges are a little rough, um, but all I'm gonna to do is take uh, a little bit of sanding block and sand this down to kind of break off the edges. And then, you know, it should be fine. And this is the same thing where the bottom wasn't um, mudded in or anything. It's not attached, but now that this is dry, there's almost no movement in the the patch, which is perfect, which is what we want. Um, and then this one over here, the double one will be ideally pretty much the exact same, where once the mud dries, it basically locks everything in place. 
and then you won't even notice that there was a patch there. You shouldn't know there was a patch there. But that's all I got for this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions or suggestions on how to maybe do this better, um, feel free to let me know down in the comments, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.